Minimalism, when we usually think about it, we think of possessions. So we think about condiments maybe, or cleaners, papers, clothes. But minimalism extends far beyond just possessions because possessions, definitely, it helps us to simplify life, save money, and experience more. Because the more that we procrastinate or the more that we feel overwhelmed, the less likely we're going to go out and try things. So possessions do have their place, but there are many other areas that minimalism benefits my life. The very first way that minimalism benefits is recipe cards. I write down my recipe cards very in a very minimalist manner. With recipe cards, there is so much room for condensing. So for instance, you can put all of th this recipe card contains all of my smoothie recipes. So I can look at my smoothie recipes at a glance and know what I need to put in there. And because I know that everything in recipe cards deals with either tablespoons or cups, then I can even leave off cup, obviously, after everything. So if I'm going to put my berry smoothie, I'll put berry three, uh, almond milk two, and I won't put cup after it because it's just excess. You're going to know what that means. And so I write shorthand as much as I can when it comes to recipe cards. For instance, olive oil is O and O. Now, just like with stenography, you don't want to be making briefs or short forms for things that are rare. So if you only use, for instance, nutmeg once in a blue moon for two recipes, you don't just want to put N <laughs> because you're not going to remember what that is. So you really only want to shorten the things that you know use all the time. Whenever I bake, I always use one type of flour and that's all-purpose flour. So AP is all-purpose flour, OO is olive oil, SP is salt and pepper. So there's plenty of ways to shorten it like that, but also you can condense them and put them on re one recipe card. So if you cook the same recipes again and again, like most of us do, then you can put three recipes on one card. Therefore, you can just have one card out and there's your recipes for the week. Well, you just want to think about efficiency. So if you're going to be writing down your grocery list, you always want to organize it according to the layout of the store. So it's easier if you just get all of your groceries at one store because then you can just you just know it in the, in your head. You just know where everything is and you can make it into a circle. Therefore, you're not circling around for things. Energy and visuals are really important in minimalism. A lot of people don't take full advantage of those benefits. So the next thing is mail. You can grab your mail and just recycle it. But all of my mail now comes in my Gmail or it comes or I pay it online automatically. So I don't need to save any of my mail. And that is a really efficient way of checking mail and just processing it. Don't give yourself room to procrastinate. Make your life as simple as it is possibly. Now, if you get a lot of benefit from the mail that comes in, you know, gauge it, pay attention to how much benefit and how much joy you're actually getting out of things, if that's actually what you wanna be doing. Social media is another example, just like mail. Sometimes we just get magazines and we don't have anything better to do, so we just start browsing or we're trying to procrastinate, or we want some sort of pleasure. We want to find something new, so we're waiting for that hit. But pay attention to how things are affecting you. So social media is the same way. Pay very close attention, and I'm not saying to get rid of all mail or to get rid of all social media, but make sure that you're doing things that are actually giving you pleasure, and things that are giving you pleasure in a healthy way that aren't also making you anxious. For instance, if you're spending too much money, <laughs> then that's giving you anxiety. So the, you might be getting some benefit and pleasure out of that, but you're also getting anxiety. So definitely consider what you're doing as you're doing it. And also on social media, you want to make your feeds curated according to what you really like, according to things that actually inspire you or that go along your interests. Because what we consume all the time, obviously it has an impact on us. And the very next way that minimalism is of benefit is keyboard commands. I will put my favorite keyboard commands in the down bar, but I love using keyboard commands because that's another thing that saves effort. And it's a fun thing to learn and there's a good reason to learn it because it's going to save you effort in the long run. So many programs that we log onto our computer for, we use all of the time. And the same thing with our phone, we use the same apps or the same programs on our laptop 
all the time. So why not make shortcuts for them to open them so that you don't have to be clicking, clicking, clicking. So most computer programmers, they can do almost everything with just the keyboard. And the same thing with your phone. You want to make sure the apps that you use are going to be around your thumb. So if you're right-handed or left-handed, make sure that they're organized according to the easiest to grab. Why make your job more difficult? This is all going to save you a lot of energy in the long run. The next way that I simplify my life is I stick to the same products always as much as possible. I look for the best possible product and then I stick to it. And I do that because I want consistent results and I want to be focusing on other things in my life other than just products, obviously. Also, I want to take them out of the bottle and put them into containers. So if I only have one night cream, one face wash, then I can take everything out and I don't need the label because I'm gonna get through it in a good enough time. I don't need to know when it expires. And it just looks visually appealing. In the bathroom, it looks like a spa. So it's more efficient to get the product out. It looks better. So there's a lot of benefits with just sticking to what works. So oftentimes we deviate because we want new experiences and there's nothing wrong with switching it up. But consider the areas that you actually want to be switching up. Consider the areas that actually make the biggest difference. For instance, makeup. If you switch up makeup, it does make a big difference. If you switch up your face wash, it probably doesn't. So there are many ways to switch up your life. For instance, recipes, hairstyles. There's so many things that you can do that don't require you to use extra body products, for instance, and that will make a bigger difference in your life overall. Especially if you're sensitive to scents, then this is the perfect way for you. Another benefit of buying the same type of products is you can find it online and most times you don't even need to leave the house anymore to get it. If you're always switching it up, then you've got to go in person and find new products all the time. And there's nothing wrong with shopping. Shopping is one way that we get a hit of pleasure. But there's many other ways to get a hit of pleasure that don't clutter up your home or that don't weigh on your bank account. Usually it wears off very quickly. So there's other ways, which I've written a whole blog post about that if you wanna look into that, if you do have a shopping addiction. The next thing that minimalism really affects is our decision making. We want to be able to make quick decisions because a lot of times, and I'm guilty of this, I overthink everything and I can't make a decision. So minimalism helps us to make quicker decisions and based on instinct and based on intuition. And also it, it enables you to consider things in regards to practicality. So when you're looking at something, you're thinking, is this gonna stand the test of time? Is this gonna be practical? So I always get items that I can put in the dishwasher because I dishwasher everything. I always get things like placemats that can go in the dishwasher. And I also, for instance, I just bought a toilet paper holder in the bathroom and it is a vertical one. And I knew that I wanted a vertical one because it just makes so much sense. Changing the roll is so easy. And also the dust when it's falling, it's not getting caught on the part that you're wiping with. So it makes so much sense. So making a purchase, for instance, the cordless vacuum, making purchases with efficiency in mind. I love vertical toilet paper rolls because they also look unique. You already know that a lot of things I don't have labels on, but the visuals of minimalism can be so stunning. You can get clear things, for instance, clear is my favorite. If I'm gonna pick a shade for anything, it's going to be clear. And that's because it's see-through and it looks otherworldly to me. And like a vertical toilet paper roll looks different. And there's so many ways that you can make things look unique and look spacious. And it also allows you to create an environment that is not only serene, but it also is an environment that encourages creativity and allows you to think out of the box. So that's why I like minimalism because you have to use ingenuity to make things work and it encourages you to visually make things minimal. So it almost looks like it's not even there. Like my lamp in the living room is clear. It almost looks like it's not there. And the last thing is appointments. Appointments, as much as possible, you want to get things to be as little maintenance if you really want to save energy. If you get massages, you can get a tennis ball and carry you through in between massages if that's your thing. Or if you go to the salon a lot, you can do some things at your home to prolong things so that you don't have to get your hair done right away. So it's just basically trying to minimize appointments and really questioning why you're doing what you're doing. Is it actually providing benefit to you and your children? 
What are the things that you want to be doing? What is your ideal life? You know, we want to think about really where where do we want to head? Where do we want to end up? What is a life that's going to give us pleasure day to day? And see if we're actually living anywhere near that. Chances are we're just reacting to life because life gets stressful. Things pile on top of each other, whether appointments or whether appointments or possessions, and we just get caught up in the vortex of living. And we don't think about are we living the life we always dreamed about? <laughs> are we living a life that we'd like to be living? Are we leaving the legacy that we want to? Are we being the example that we want to? You know, so I really encourage you to use minimalism to serve you. Don't let minimalism be something that you rack your brain about and you're always trying to get down to the lowest number, but use it so that it provides you the closest to your ideal life, whatever that life is. So I hope that this video helped you out. If it did, definitely subscribe. I'll see you guys next Sunday in the next Minimalist and Organization video. Thank you guys so much for watching.